Hey, strong artists, it's time to say goodbye to summer. And we're going to do that by making a simple line sunset inspired by the artist Camille Garrick. Materials are linked in the description below. So grab what you need and let's build some art muscles. A few notes before we begin. One, stick around until the very end. We have a very special guest coming to visit in this video. It was a surprise drop in, so I'm really excited she decided to come join us. Two, I'm using tempera cakes for my watercolor paint in this project. Use whatever paint you have handy. If you don't have paint, you could do the background in markers and crayons and color pencils or leave it totally blank. Black and white is super classy. Three, I designed this lesson to help you warm up your art muscles after a long summer. If you wanna follow along and do exactly what I do, Great, if you wanna do your own thing, from a different color background to a totally different design, do it. If you need inspiration, I've linked some templates in the description below just to help you spark your imagination. Last thing, the lines we use in this project are very simple. We've got some horizontal, vertical, and gentle curves. Nothing too fancy. We don't wanna overcrowd the paper. So remember, less can be more in this situation. We're going for simple and serene, as we say so long to summer. That's all for now. Let's get to work. We're going to start this project by painting the background. I'm gonna use the rainbow, but you can choose any color combo you like. But remember to start with your lightest color. Because we're using watercolors, you always wanna start with your lightest color first because you can't layer light on top of dark if you want that lightest color to show when using these kinds of paints. With that in mind, I'm putting down my first layer of yellow in the middle of my page because I know later on I'll be blending it with orange on top and green on the bottom. Let's take a moment to notice my brush strokes. I'm holding my brush sideways and almost tapping and scooting the paint around. I do this because I want my background to have an almost light, fluffy, cloud-like texture versus a smooth one. If you want a smooth texture, try moving your brush like a broom. Think of a fish or shark tail going back and forth. You can also experiment and try a diagonal motion, spirals. It's totally up to you. Beyond the texture, the next thing you wanna consider is how you're blending your paints. I like to add the next color above my previous one and then I scoot them together. Sometimes what I'll do before blending them together is clean my brush, tap it on my paper towel and just use that moisture to blend the colors together. That can help make a really soft and smooth transition. No matter how you blend or hold your brush, just try to remember to go at your own speed. I always tell my students, it's never a race. Artists work at their own pace. Yes, we do love a good rhyme in the art room. This part of the project is about exploration and experimentation with color. Try to have fun with it. Don't worry about it being right or wrong or perfect. So often perfect is the enemy of good enough. And everybody has their own painting process. Notice I started in the middle, then I went up to the top, and now here I'm working at the bottom. My process works for me, and it might feel a little different for you. So find what works for you. The best practice that's gonna make you the strongest artist is what you can do over and over again because we know what you practice grows stronger. If you wanna add some cloud-like texture, like actual clouds, grab a paper towel and tap away your paint. This will only work if your watercolors are still kind of wet. So you can also add a little bit of water to your paper towel or the painting itself and then tap it away gently. Now it's time to add lines in the style of Camille Garrick. Her compositions are simple and peaceful. 
She uses thick and thin lines to draw the eye in a certain direction and adds fine details for that extra little oomph. If you're feeling nervous about starting on your painting, grab a piece of scrap paper and practice different backgrounds first. What I'm going to do is use the color on my painting to determine where my lines go. I'm starting with purple and following where it kind of ends-ish. And I like that line, so what I'm going to do is echo it, but it's easier for me to draw from top to bottom, so I just turn my paper. Always feel free to move and shift your artwork so it's in the most comfortable position for you. Let's talk a little more about these lines. Honestly, I did not have a plan when I did this piece. I just wanted to experiment and see what would happen. This process might make you a little nervous and that's totally okay. If you wanna work through some of those nerves, just grab a piece of practice paper, like I said before, and try out a design first. You can also consider making two watercolor backgrounds next time and having one be your practice and the other be your final. Now what you see me do is switch up my line. I want there to be a difference. This is almost like I'm imagining the top of my ocean line. I mean, who knows if that's ocean, but you know, it's blue, so I'm making that ocean. And again, I'm echoing that line again, just repeating it, going really slow, using almost the side of my marker instead of the tippity tip tip tip. Y'all know Sharpie tips are fragile, so you know, be gentle. Now to separate the ocean blue from the land green, I'm using my thickest Sharpie. And what I'm also going to do to make sure I know that there's a clear difference between the bottom half and the top half is I change the texture of my line. Look at how much smoother these top ones are compared to the bottom. Hold your Sharpie gently like a paintbrush as you move across the page. And also be aware, those poster Sharpies can smudge, so don't rub your hand on it. This is an important moment in this process. I stop. This is real time. I'm thinking about what I want to do next. Now I'm going for it. I've decided that I want my rainbow to be here. Remember, I've separated the ocean, the land. Now the warm colors are my sky. And instead of rushing to the next step, I stopped, took a moment, and looked at where I wanted that rainbow to be because I also want to save room for a little sun. My design here is directly inspired by Camille. I love her use of thick and thin lines in a rainbow. So first I started with my thickest lines and I'm going to soon add the thin ones, but I want to make my edge stand out by adding a double thick line. I'm going to add some other details in there later. I'm going to speed this video up. You can follow along with my design, use one of Camille's, or make one of your own. Just go slow and don't overcrowd the paper. Remember, you want that background to shine bright. As promised in the beginning, our special guest is about to arrive. There she is, Tiny Baby the Cat, in real life. During this filming, she didn't actually step on my work as I was creating it. She waited until just after I finished these vertical lines to lie down. I hope you like this project as much as Tiny Baby the Cat. <music> Thank you for making this simple line sunset with me. I hope you enjoyed experimenting with color blending and adding your lines one by one to reveal a beautiful sunset. How adorable is Tiny Baby? I'm so glad she came to visit us. She usually plops right down in the middle of my art making, so I'm glad she waited until the end this time. If you like this project, stay tuned. Next week, I'm going to introduce to you the first project I give my fourth graders. It's a peace sign with Zen Tangle designs around the border, and we tie-dye the background. There's so many different types of art you can create 
just using simple lines and patterns. So feel free to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next project. Happy creating, friends.